Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Make Sure to Catch Only the Fish We Want to Eat? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Current Biology, published on February 28, 2022. Research conducted by Jesse F. Senko, Hoyt Peckham, Daniel Aguilar Ramirez, and John H. Wang from the School of Life Sciences at Arizona State University, Grupo Tortuguero de las Californias in La Paz, Mexico, the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Institute in Mexico City, and NOAA Fisheries in Hawaii, respectively. See additional affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. How much do you think seafood is worth? Would it surprise you to know that the world's seafood market was worth over $250 billion in 2021? And it's not just money. Three billion people, over a third of the world's population, rely on seafood as their main source of protein. But the way that we fish is harming marine life. Bycatch, where animals like sharks and turtles are accidentally caught, is a big problem. We urgently need to find solutions. We wanted to find out whether we could use lights to make gill net fishing better. Could using illuminated nets reduce the amount of bycatch? We found that illuminated gill nets reduce the amount of bycatch. Even better, fishers using the nets still caught lots of the fish that they were targeting and spent less time retrieving the nets. It's a win-win. Introduction. What do you imagine when you think of a fishing boat? Perhaps you picture a small rowboat with a few fishing rods. But this isn't what most fishing looks like across the world. There are loads of different boats and ways to catch fish. The biggest fishing boat in the world is 144 meters or 472 feet long and uses nets that can be bigger than football fields. Fishing like this is called commercial fishing. It's big business, employing 60 million people globally. The most popular type of fishing gear in the world is called a gill net. Here in figure one, you can see a gill net is a wall of netting that traps fish and other marine animals. A bottom set gill net hangs from a float line of buoys and is anchored to the seafloor. We used paired sets of these nets with lights on them, one illuminated and one with the lights off. In the diagram, you can see two red buoys floating at the surface. Under the water are the nets. The one on the right has illuminated lights, and the one on the left has the lights off. The float line is at the top of the net near the lights. On the bottom, you can see the anchor and the sink lines, which keep the net extended toward the seafloor. It's important for coastal communities all around the world. Gill nets are easy to use and not too expensive, so millions of people rely on this type of fishing for food and to earn a living. The problem is that gill net fishing isn't very selective. It's not just the target species the ones we're trying to catch, that get caught. Everything from sharks to turtles are caught too. We call this bycatch, and most of the time, these animals are thrown back into the sea, dead or injured. But telling people not to use gill nets isn't always a practical solution. We wanted to work with fishers to find a way to make gill net fishing more sustainable. We know that many bycatch animals are sensitive to light and may behave differently than target species. Could we use this to prevent them from being caught? We designed an experiment using illuminated gill nets to find out. Methods. We wanted to make sure that our experimental nets would work for fishers in the real world. So we teamed up with local gill net fishers off the coast of Baja California Sur, Mexico. We worked with the fishers to build illuminated nets. We attached battery powered waterproof lights to the top of the net. 
These pointed down to light up the whole net. We also added inactive lights to the conventional nets to keep everything as similar as possible. We then carried out a controlled experiment to compare the nets. We chose a busy fishing area during the peak gillnet season. Here, fishers mainly target halibut and large grouper. We deployed 28 sets of paired gill nets, illuminated and conventional, for between 8 and 14 hours each, at depths ranging from 11 meters to 44 meters, or 36 to 144 feet. The nets were deployed, retrieved, and sorted by the same fishing crew. We collected data on the amount of bycatch, amount of target catch, and the time taken to retrieve and sort, or remove the bycatch and target species from the net. Results. In total, our nets were in the water for almost 700 hours. During this time, they caught 39 species, weighing over 2.5 metric tons in total, as much as a small elephant. We found that illuminated nets reduced the total bycatch by 63%. Shark and ray bycatch was reduced by 95%. 27 bycatch species were caught, including loggerhead turtles and Humboldt squid. There was no difference between the nets when it came to the target catch. That means the lights did not prevent the target fish from being caught. 14 target fish species were caught and kept by the fishers to sell. It took the fishers 57% less time to bring in and sort the illuminated nets. Having less bycatch meant the nets were lighter, with less drag. Also, less time was spent handling difficult animals like turtles and rays. We expect this to save fishers an average between 56 and 70 minutes per fishing trip. Here in figure two, you can see the amount of bycatch in conventional nets versus illuminated nets for different groups of marine animals. In the graph, the x-axis shows four different groups of bycatch. From left to right, they are sharks and rays, Humboldt squid, fin fish, and loggerhead turtles. On the y-axis, you can see the weight of the bycatch in kilograms per 100 meters of gill net. For each group of bycatch, the dark purple bars indicate the amount caught in the conventional nets, and the light purple bars indicate the amount caught in the illuminated nets. Looking at the graph, Roughly how many kilograms of Humboldt squid were caught per 100 meters of conventional net as compared to 100 meters of illuminated net? Discussion. Illuminated nets are better for the fishers and better for marine life. We can use these nets to reduce bycatch of sharks and rays, which were losing rapidly because of overfishing and bycatch. So why do the illuminated nets reduce bycatch, but not target catch? Do the lights make it easier for animals to see and avoid the net? Animals like sharks and rays can have sensitive eyes. Maybe the light is annoying enough to avoid. We need to do more work to find out. Using illuminated nets makes gill net fishing safer and more profitable. Bycatch animals are often big and heavy. They can injure fishers and damage the nets. And with illuminated nets, fishers can catch the same amount of target catch in less time. So, illuminated nets could make gill net fishing more sustainable. But we need to get fishers on board. The lights aren't cheap, about seven to nine dollars each. And the batteries need to be replaced periodically. We're looking into solar powered lights that could help. Conclusion. You may have heard that there are plenty of fish in the sea, but really, there aren't. 90% of target fish populations are fished to their maximum, or even worse, overfished, but you can use the power of your pleat to help. 
There are loads of great websites to help you choose sustainable fish. Check out the MBA Seafood Watch or WWF Seafood Guides for multiple countries, the MCS Good Fish Guide for the UK, or NOAA's Fish Watch for the USA. Also look for labels that indicate more sustainable types of fishing, like pole and line. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.